Hi everyone, Stepan here. I'm going to show you my round five game from the CSVT Open I played in February. Uh, before I start, I'd like to say that I had two New Year's resolutions at the beginning of this year. Number one, I'm not going to play the London anymore. Number two, I'm going to try to play more aggressively. Meaning, if I see a possible peace sacrifice and I'm not 100% sure it works, I'm still going to go for it because I never did that before. And I think that's important uh, for the development of my tactical skills. That being said, here's the game. Uh, I'm playing a very tricky opponent. He's actually better than his rating, I want to say, and he's also a nice guy. Uh, I played d4. We ended up uh, driving together to the tournament for the rest of the tournament. So g6, c4, d6, and I played knight f3 here. The reason I played knight f3 is if we get a normal king's Indian, I wanted to play something different to the semi averbach which I usually play but I'm, I'm not going to say what because it's still a part of my repertoire. And here he surprised me with f5, which attempts to transpose into the Leningrad Dutch. Now, I have ways of avoiding a Leningrad by playing e4, and I know e4, but the problem in my mind is to move knight h6. And after something like bishop e2, I, I really don't feel comfortable in, in white's position. If black knows their stuff, there are many attacking possibilities. So I didn't want to go for this, and th the main line sort of is fe4, and I'm, I'm not afraid of this. This seems okay. I like this position for white. I think the open e file is more beneficial to white, especially since f5 is going to have to be played at some point, and black really needs to do something about this bishop first. In any case, I didn't want to go for that. I played g3, transposing to a normal Leningrad after knight f6. This is main line stuff, thousands of games. Now in this position, the main line, which again I know is castles and queen e8 and d5. And again, I'm not a big fan of this position for white. I don't like this pawn on d5 because this bishop is wide open. And I have similar problems here that I have in sort of Benoni structures. But the pawn is already on f5, so I don't know the plans here. I know the theory, but I really don't know the plans. So I played queen c2, which is flexible. It's not a bad move. It's it's a move. My opponent played uh, queen e8. I should mention that the idea behind queen c2 is long term to prevent the move e5. The way I want to do that is I want to move my bishop away and I want to go rook d1, uh, which will influence the d8 square. And if I can get my bishop to g5, black doesn't really want to go h6. So th that was the general idea. Also, the queen is useful on c2. Uh, I played bishop f4, and this just puts the brakes on, on e5 for now. I was expecting knight h5, that was played. And now I threw in knight d5. I could have played bishop g5 straight away, but knight d5 looks at c7 that has to be defended, so knight a6, and now bishop g5. And... He, he played rook f7, he has to defend the pawn, and I played rook d1. And now you can see the bishop and the rook looking at the d8 square. So e5 has basically been prevented. Uh, he told me after the game that he didn't see it until he saw e5, until he played e5. He didn't play it here, he threw in c6 and knight c3, and then e5. And I, I just assumed that he was completely losing here which isn't true. He's losing if he takes, of course. So I took d5, and he, he cannot take back if, if d5, then rook d8 is the end of the game. He has to throw in h6. Okay, and now I would like you to, to pause the video and figure out what you would do. Uh, before you do that, I would like to thank uh, Chessbook for sponsoring this video. Chessbook is a great tool for working on your repertoire, practicing your repertoire, and memorizing your repertoire. I've actually been using it every day during my last tournament. I would prepare for the game, import the variations I was expecting to happen in the game, and then drill them on, on Chessbook until I was sure I knew them. So it's, it's great for tournament players as well. What you can do is you can import your repertoire either, either by hand or by importing a PGN. And then you can practice those moves. It's extremely easy to navigate. Uh, I've shown it a couple of times before. Uh, it's 
it's very intuitive so you, you can do that on your own once you import your repertoire and you can as you can see create a bunch of different repertoires uh, then you can practice those moves you can also connect your Lee chess or chess.com accounts and uh, chessbook is going to recognize the mistakes you'd made in your own games so you can practice only the, the 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 points of your repertoire that are the weakest it will also give you the option to play through model games from your openings and Again, it's a well-rounded platform for, for working on your repertoire. Uh, the basic version is free, but the number of moves you can import is limited. The premium version is $5 a month. And if you want to check out Chessbook, there's a link in the description below. If you would like to get free premium membership, you can join the Blitz tournament that we're playing today at 7 p.m. Central European time. Uh, there will be a couple of free premium memberships for the winners i hope i see you there let's go back to the video thank you so okay there are a couple of normal moves uh, you can play bishop f6 that's okay and after knight f6 ef6 of course rook f6 is forced otherwise rook takes d6 and white should hold a slight edge here because the knight doesn't really have a useful square knight c5 runs into b4 knight c7 is kind of passive and i can easily go rook d2 rook d1 put pressure on d6 this bishop I, I don't really like this bishop so that was option number one option number two is to give up the bishop but you have to decide how there are actually three ways to give up the bishop and they all seem very interesting for example bishop h4 g5 bishop takes h takes knight takes and let's say rook d7 is better for white this is huge this pawn is amazing and my bishop is good my queen is good this pawn is weak this knight is absurd on h5 i'm gonna castle i'm gonna go e4 the engine gives this as plus one for a white so that was option number one uh, option number two is to take on d6 straight away and if the bishop is taken then knight takes <clears throat> and again rook d7 and now i can go c5 now the pawn, can, the, the pawn can be taken, but I have knight b5 or knight d5, looking at the c7 square. And if, if the knight is taken, then I take with the bishop, I take the knight, and again, it seems interesting. And the final option, which I ended up playing after having spent maybe half an hour, maybe a bit less, is rook takes d6. Rook takes d6 is the worst of four options, but it seemed extremely tempting and it seemed to give me an interesting position. I'm going to tell you how far I saw. So this part is forced. h takes g5, rook takes g6, and g4, absolutely forced. And knight h4 after that, and queen takes e5. This is all forced. Now, at this, in this position, I had two options. In my mind, there was queen d2 or rook g5. And queen d2 seemed more interesting. I liked queen d2. Rook g5 attacks the knight, and after knight f6, I just take on f5. Okay, and after bishop takes f5, rook f5, the queen retreats, I castle. This is a bunch of pawns for a bishop, or sorry, for a knight actually. And the king, even though there are no pawns around the king, seems kind of safe with the knight, bishop, rook, and queen around it. So I wasn't sure about this position. So I decided not to trade anything and leave the knight on h5. Maybe it's going to be a liability later. There are ideas of playing h3 and hg. So the knight could be in trouble. So I played queen d2, which is a blunder. Rook g5 is the only good move. After queen d2, uh, black is much better the engine gives this as more than minus one okay uh now he should have developed his pieces he's a piece up he needs to play bishop d7 and get the rook into play so something like bishop d7 h3 i don't know knight c5 or rook somewhere hg4 fg4 and there's pressure on the knight but it really isn't enough okay instead he played rook f6 which isn't a good move I had an immediate win here, or something very close to winning in practical play. I had the move queen g5, which I didn't even consider. Now he has to take. I take with the queen, and of course, 
Uh, sorry, I take with the knight attacking the queen, and the knight is attacked. So if he plays knight f6, I take the queen. If he moves the queen away, let's say to, to a5, then I can simply castle, and I don't have to take the knight straight away. If the knight tries to save itself, then I have rook d1. And this is extremely unpleasant. After something like bishop e6, there's knight e4. Again, the pawn is pinned. The, the queen is hanging. I didn't I didn't see queen g5. This is way too complicated. For me, I I if I'd seen it, I'm not sure I would have seen knight e4 in that position, or or, or I'm pretty sure I wouldn't have seen it. So I played rook g5, which isn't a good move. Black is slightly better once again. Uh, he played rook d6, that's correct. Queen c1, knight c5, and finally castles. And the idea here is I want to go e4. If I play e4, because the pawn is pinned, uh, I'm going to have a tremendous attack. So the knight is loose, okay, obviously, uh, and black needs to do something. So he played rook h6, which isn't a good move. He needs to bring the knight back into play. I should also mention that in this position, if I take uh, uh, here, there's knight d3. So I cannot so I cannot win the knight before I, I castle or, or move my queen. So I castle. And again, he needs to play knight f6, bring the knight back into play. Instead, he played rook h6 and now e4. And things get very tricky for black now. If, if the pawn is taken, I win the queen. Uh, I assumed I was winning here, and for once I was correct, because there are just too many pieces in the middle of black's position. His best move is knight d3, and after queen d2, knight to f4. This is the engine line that keeps black in the game. Now I can take on f5, I can take on f4, I, I can basically do anything after queen f4, queen f4, knight f4, knight f5. This is just huge for me. This is huge. I'm I'm two pawns up, and my king is safer, and it should be winning. After e4, though, he didn't play knight d3. He played king h7, and now e f5. Just getting rid of all the pawns. The the pawn on g4 is going to fall, and then the diagonals start to open up, and the king is on h7. He played bishop f6, which I'd expected. Rook takes. Bishop takes f5, and now I could have won the queen. Unfortunately, I didn't see it. I automatically recaptured on f5, but rook e1 actually traps the queen or wins the bishop, so he, he would have had to take. And of course, this is over, because his king is too wide open. Uh, and these pieces, even though they defend pretty well, if something like this happens, aren't going to be able to shelter the king from my queen and bishop. So th this is winning for me. But I took on f5, which is still good. I'm still better. Queen takes f5 and bishop h3, threatening a discovery. So queen f3, queen c2 check, which isn't a good move. I had better moves. I should have included my rook into the game because he has queen d3. And now I have to decline once again. And here he made a mistake. Uh, he took on c3. I, I think he needs this bishop to defend. This is my only bad piece, if I'm going to be honest, uh, because it's out of play. And even though I can play knight e4, I think the bishop is more important than the knight because it's already well placed. So bishop c3, bc3, of course, and rook g6. After rook g6, the position went from better for white, slightly better for white, to completely winning for white. And find the winning idea if you want. Uh, there are two winning moves. I saw both of them. I, I couldn't decide which was better. I should say that at this point, I, I think he was in time trouble already. So there are two winning moves. One of them is rook g5, which I didn't play. And this has to be taken, uh, of course. Uh, well, if, if something like, I don't know, rook h6, then bishop f5 check. And, and they just win the queen. So rook takes, queen takes, and the knight is trapped. If queen g6, then again bishop f5. So the other winning move, which is equally winning, is rook h4. And I don't know what to suggest here. If, 
if okay let's see if rook h6 then queen g5 and the, again the knight is dropping there's bishop f5 if, if queen g6 so he played queen f3 but it, that doesn't work uh, I can go bishop g4 funnily enough I, I didn't see that and on rook g4 rook h5 something like king g8 queen h6 is going to win the rook in the corner instead I played rook e1 which seemed sensible uh, I have rook e7 his only move to stay in the game was knight d3 but I think I calculated or not to stay in the game he's still losing but the best move but I think I calculated everything correctly after rook e7 king g8 queen c2 and there's just too much pressure he needs to put the knight on f4 uh, to defend the rook and now just rook e3 evicting the queen and two rooks a bishop a queen this one is out of play but he played rook f8 I played queen c2 pinning the rook to the king and defending f2 knight d3 and now this is a simple winning tactic rook e3 he has to take on f2 otherwise he loses the knight and we just win a piece after knight takes f2 rook takes knight and this was basically the end of the game he played on for a couple more moves i'm going to show you how the game ended uh it's just two pawns up for me with an excellent position and a very safe king bishop f5 uh, attacking the knight and the rook so rook gf6 only move g4 once again attacking the knight knight d1 rook e7 and rook f7 uh, blunders away the exchange so bishop e6 um he may have tried knight e3 but it, it it just doesn't work there there's nothing here he could have tried rook f1 as well but again it leads to nothing he took on c3 which okay it, it's a pawn so i took took on b7 he can take on f7 win win the piece back the end game is completely winning knight e2 and i allow the fork because if he takes on h5 bishop takes if he takes on f7 rook takes and and again the end game is completely winning so here he resigned uh i'm happy i gave up a piece i'm not happy it was the worst of four options but still i i won the game with a sacrifice which i i don't believe i ever did before thank you for watching i'll show you uh the next game tomorrow and that game was ugh, I, I, I don't want to spoil anything you'll see it tomorrow thank you for watching stay tuned for more chess bye bye